Last month, 10 years on from their first issue, London-based magazine V&A announced their departure from the scene. In this episode, I take a look back at what made them such an important piece of urban contemporary history. My name's Doug, this is Football TV. <laughs> Naturally, there was no better place to celebrate 10 years of service and bid farewell than Stolen Space Gallery on Brick Lane. To mark the occasion, artists from all over the spectrum donated canvases to raise money for Macmillan Cancer. Artists like Ariz, Ben Ayn, Shepard Fairey, Anthony Lister all donated, which in total raised over £20,000. Although it has to be said, nothing quite hit the mark like the Connor Harrington original. Who'd have thought? Before I show you any clips, I just want to apologise. On the night, my mic wasn't working, which I didn't realise till I got back. Classic fifth wall. I promise one day this will all be a well-oiled machine. I've subtitled it, so hopefully it's not too bad. And they always come with the best people, the fact that they deliver the suit hats. They were the best suit hats. Uh, here we are, I'm, I'm here just now with Club Tropicana, uh, fresh off the boat. Uh, Roy, how are you feeling right now? Uh, living to be the local dog. How does it feel? Uh, the end of the end of the I was kind of relieved, to be honest. Cool. <laughs> no, it's good. Um, it's amazing to know that. I mean, it's, you know, it's amazing to see so much like, done over the years and, and everyone pretty much to the uh, man and woman who has been distraught with him when he the mic. But it feels like time, we've done 10 years. Um, no, we gave it a nudge and it feels like we're time to wrap up. Everyone's got mortgages and babies and uh, we're not going to grow up sometime. So, uh, Graffiti and street art culture is vastly different today than it was 10 years ago. While Banksy was cementing his place as a household name, the rest of the scene was predominantly made up of guys who enjoyed writing on walls and pissheads who enjoyed free beer on first Thursdays. Whilst that ideology and culture will always remain true, there's no denying what a globalised beast this scene has become. From street art advertising to celebrity artists, the influence of opportunity and money is ever present. And I think V&A's reluctance to bow to financial pressures are indicative of its authenticity right to the end. V&A started off as a really, really shit factory. Like, 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 And, and like, a, like an aesthetic. Okay, v &A was instrumental in putting up and They always kind of uh, promoted unsung heroes. Like, so they would get artists you've never really heard of, as well as the different artists. And a lot of these other magazines just have big names on the side. I think it's someone who's come in and promote the underdog. Of course, street art and graffiti culture had ran through every single page, but it was much more than just a street art magazine, you know, from puppeteers to photographers, skateboarders. There's, I mean, there's a few people who missed off, there's a few people that uh, we didn't quite manage to catch in the net, um, but it's also been amazing to see, you know, I mean, I put on some of City Boys fair shows and just my bars, and it's been amazing to see the growth of people like Sick Boy and Zen, and Jago, um, and you kind know, of follow the work with them as, as they've grown as artists and people. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's been a journey for everyone, and it's been to see everyone as well. So to George, Greg and Rolly, to every single photographer, writer, contributor and artist that played their part in shaping V&A, I just want to say thank you for giving fanboys like me access into a world in which it seems absolutely anything is possible. No, I didn't, I didn't bring up Banksy. Yeah, I think it's a sore subject. They were so close. George, I fucking love you boys. Big nuts. You have to do everything, nothing, 